Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Steve Kaff, I JUF. Hope everyone's doing okay. So today I got an update for you. Uh, last week we had uh, high winds in the area, and today one of what I want to talk about is uh, I had a problem last weekend when I was making a video uh, up there with the Catskill repeater in New York. I noticed I had I had high SWR, and uh, had high winds, so I thought, well, maybe the wind had something to do with it. Well, today, or yesterday, I went back and did some more testing, and the SWR's, SWR is high on both 10-meter FM, 29600, and it's also high on 10-meter upper sideband, 28400. So the antenna and system has a problem, so we're going to document it. Looking at the uh, the discovery uh, of high SWR, 50 mile per hour winds gust, and I'm going to show you how I use the MFJ225, and I'm going to show you post and pre, uh, pre and post data. So what I look at real carefully is on the radio, I pay attention particularly to one thing very, very important. I'm going to circle it right here, is this right here. Particularly this. This, when I have this set to SWR, I can see exactly what the radio is interpreting. So, for example, on this here, you see we have an SWR of almost four. And I saw this last week and I didn't like it. So, I verified with my inline SWR meter, and guess what? I got the same thing four. Forward power and reflective power. Wherever the needle crosses, that's where your SWR is, and guess what? That's at a 4. So what this was telling me was true. This was true. I knew I had a problem. And, of course, I ran the antenna analyzer on it today, and it was still true again. SWR of 4, 4, and 4. So this antenna feed line has a problem. Six months ago, on the 10 meter, basically everything was good. We had an SWR of about 1.4, which you can see here. Perfect. Always good to keep data. And we had good data here, running 100 watts. Perfect. So let me mention something. You see right here, I'm running 50 watts. Look what the radio is actually putting out. It's only putting out 20 watts, and that's because of this high SWR. It's cutting back the power. So that's another thing to pay attention to. Now here's the 10 meter upper sideband six months ago. Pet perfect SWR, looking good, about 1.3, 1.4. Same thing here, looking good. So the wind, this is uh, what you're looking at over here is pre and this is post and it took a hit particularly when you look right right here this area right here something went really wrong right there because if you look there's a problem I'm going straight up and all of a sudden pew I'm going off that way so something happened up there hadn't gone up there to look at it yet this is the windstorm pretty rough Yep, it was uh, it was a uh, it was it was going a long time. Seemed like seemed like forever. All right. Uh, now we're going to run some data. We're going to use the uh, MFJ two two five, and we're going to use the free software MIG Mini VNA, which most of you that work with uh, a lot of the different VNA products, this software looks is probably pretty familiar to you. But what I did, I purchased the MFJ225 a while back before I really did a lot of research. If I had it to do over again, I probably would have bought a different one. But you know what? This one was a great one. I enjoyed it. One of my friends in the club let me borrow his, and I just loved it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to connect my antenna feed line system to the output of this MFJ225, and then I'm going to use a uh, shielded our uh, USB cable and what I'm going to do here with this cable is I'm going to connect it from here to the laptop and then from the laptop I'm going to run some uh, some, some testing on the IG mini software so we'll show you how we do that and of course last thing post uh, this is data about six months ago back in May 
And if you look at the SWR on the 610, it's actually really, really good. I mean, I've got a very good SWR curve all the way, all the way across the six meter band. And this is something I've always liked about this antenna. Uh, it does a great job. 1.6 nominal SW or 1.6 at 2,800. Uh, about the same at there, and and you you get you know some bonuses in here where you pick up Australia and other stations. You actually get really really good SWR. So here's what we had today. Look at this. We had SWR here, you know, as high as 4.85 at 28400, and then down here at the FM mode we had about four, which is exactly what the radio was telling us and the inline SWR meter. So essentially. Our SWRs, and uh, just to give you an idea, this is, uh, I think this is five right here. So this is four. So this this whole line is approximately four SWR, five to four in that area. So it's a mess. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the mini VNA. And what we'll do that, uh, we'll swap over to it real quick. And what I did, I'll tell you a tip. I turn it on first, and I'll, I have a video that I show you how to use it um, with, the, with the computer. I have it connected to a dummy load, and the reason I have it connected to a dummy load is because I kind of want to give you uh, an idea of what a purely resistive antenna would be. For example, if you have a frequency 28400, and you have an antenna cut exactly for that frequency with a good, clean coax good quality coax and connectors and so forth in theory at that frequency with that antenna cut you're going to have a fully resistive load so let's take a sweep i'm going to pick uh, 28 to 29.7 and let's take a sweep and there's our sweep right there i'm going to make it a little bit thicker i'm going to turn return loss off and then we'll sweep one more time what you're looking at here essentially is this is your SWR all the way across the band. And the scale is 1, 1.5, 1 to 1.5. And our SWR is literally right at a 1. And I'll give you an example here. We'll take a look at it. When I click on the screen, you'll notice this little thing is moving across here. If you look right, if you uh, just look real closely. <sighs> watch this little guy when I move the mouse see how it moves along there so what this is telling me is this is telling me the frequency this is telling me the SWR at that frequency and this is telling me the impedance which is a combination of pure resistance and reactance all uh, combined together against the the frequency of 28400 or whatever I have here 28163 and uh, for the most part this uh, fully resistive uh, dummy load is 1.1 all the way across 1.2 if i go to the impedance you're going to see the impedance is exactly at 50. so again if you look real close at the scaling over here uh, this is uh, i think this is right at 50 right here so when you go all the way across this is your impedance and remember z is your impedance so that's what that is so that's what the dummy load looks like now Let's go to the antenna. Antennas are where things get really crazy because now we have, um, you know, all these variables going on with coils and loading coils and things of that nature. All right, now I've got my 50-foot feed line and my Charlie Papa 610. I'm going to go ahead and do a sweep. Got to clear out of this. And let's go ahead and look at our SWR. Ugh, that's bad. And again, uh, this is really, really bad. You're looking at here, you see SWR uh, at 28,400. It's almost five. And when I tested this yesterday, I transmitted at 28,405. And that SWR meter, it was going almost all the way to five. And there was no power coming out of the radio. So um, I knew I had a problem yesterday. Uh, there's 28,400. The SWR is at 4.41. The impedance is at 12. Uh, there's some things going on here that I don't understand, but this, this antenna's got a bigger problem, and uh, you'll see this in a minute. If I go up to 29,600, again, it's pretty much the same. Uh, 
This is just useless. You cannot transmit with this antenna. But let me show you something. What I like to do sometimes is I go and I'll look at a wider spectrum just for fun, just to see if there's any patterns in the antenna. And ugh, look at that. That is something has gone very wrong with this because you see all these cyclical patterns here. Um, that doesn't look right. There's a pattern there. And then, of course, it gets really bad. In theory, the only frequency you could use this antenna is at... 36.22 megahertz, which is not even in the ham band, but otherwise it is, um, it's, it's bad. It's, it's not really usable. The other frequency you might be able to use is that's 48 megahertz. Again, it's not in the ham band. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's what this program is. Uh, let's go back. We got a minute or two. I want to just go back here real quick. Uh, again, this is the, uh, this is the sweep here. Um, you, one thing you can do here, if you want to click here, you can click here, and this will give you your lowest SWRs at 29,600. Again, and that's where I was transmitting last weekend, and the SWRs were just, SWR on the radio was almost four. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this video. If things go wrong, I want to show you what to look for, particularly on that SWR meter on your radio, and get an inline SWR, because those things are critical. Uh, I could have kept transmitting because the radio does throttle back the power and if you're not paying attention to the SWR uh, I could have been talk I could keep talking for months and you know if, if I'm not paying attention I you know I'm probably only putting out a quarter of the power I could because the radio is throttling it back but at the same time that throttling back is creating heat in the radio which will potentially damn it so anyway pay attention to your SWRs and uh, have a good day and thanks again from Steve Cal 5 juf Okay, this is a video here showing you real quick. This is the connection I have to my laptop. I just connect to a USB port. And what I'll show you real quick here is if you turn this off, when you connect, when you, what you'll want to do is you'll want to connect your USB cable to here. And this is going out to the antenna. This is the dummy load. But when you turn it on, what you want to do is you want to turn it on and it's going to give you four options and what you have to do is you have to come over here and press this button right here and when you press this button that's what the display shows now when you press the button it's going to come up and show you this right here and once you see that right there now you have all the functionality on the radio so this is the radio over here this uh, what I was going to show you real quick is try not to move the camera too much uh, if I go there's really not much to show you, but what I'll show you on the SWR, if you click this meter right here, you see how that's changing from compressor to ID to voltage, power. That's your transmit power. Unless you have it on SWR, remember the radio, it can clean up a not so good antenna feed line system with the antenna tuner. But if you're not, if you don't have it set to SWR, uh, and you're not paying attention to this when you're transmitting, um, you could actually be, you could have high SWR and your radio is dealing with it, but what the radio will do is it's actually going to cut that power back. So you may not even know what's going on. And again, remember, I always have those external SWR meters. I have the one on the left for the HF, and I have that one there for the uh, VHF because I want to know what's going on on the feed line which these two these guys are telling me what's going on here and then this one here is telling me what's going on inside the radio so I got two pieces of information okay all right hope this hope you enjoyed the video just wanted to share with you uh, station update and uh, 73 thanks again for watching